Hi everyone, in this video we're going to discuss uh, the cost function associated with a cubic production function. And to cut it short actually, the total cost function whenever we have a cubic production function would be cubic in nature as well. And what you'll notice in the graph here is that uh, the cost curve okay, starts out concave. So from this portion here, so from here, until somewhere here, okay, the graph is still concave. Then as, uh, as output increases, it eventually becomes convex from uh, that point here until uh, in perpetuity rather, in perpetuity. So uh, what you'll see is that total costs begin uh, rising rapidly after diminishing returns set in. So you can think of a cubic production as some sort of representation of variable returns to scale. So from point here to here, okay, you may have increasing returns to scale. At here, okay, when the slope of this is uh, already zero, this may be constant returns to scale. And when you are now in the strictly convex part, well, this is decreasing returns to scale. Uh, so we'll show how, uh, how that's uh, playing out. So if you'll notice, in the range for, of Q, wherein the cost is concave, uh, if we graph the marginal cost, it is decreasing. In this range, it can be said that uh, average cost is also decreasing. And at this inflection point, okay, uh, MC, or your marginal cost, is at its minimum. And beyond that range of Q, uh, C is convex, therefore marginal cost is increasing. And it suggests that the curves for average cost and marginal cost are U-shaped. So how does that look like? So let's dig into it. It looks something like this. So notice first, okay, for the range of Q, wherein the cost function we had earlier was concave, okay, you'll notice that from this point until this point, okay, MC is decreasing. Okay, MC is decreasing. In this output, okay, you'll notice that AC is also decreasing. So notice when uh, in the period that MC is decreasing, okay, uh, the MC is decreasing. So that's from here until here, okay. MC is decreasing until here, okay. You'll notice that AC is also decreasing. So AC is also decreasing during that time span. Uh, so MC is decreasing. In this output range, we can see that... Uh, AC is also decreasing, but we know that in this time span here, okay, uh, we know that average cost is greater than marginal cost. Okay. That's greater than marginal cost. And we can prove it uh, if we use this form here. So if you look here, one way to re-express average cost is equal to marginal cost minus the slope of the average cost function times Q. If you notice, okay, the slope, Okay, the slope of, um, of the curve here, okay, of AC, is flatter than MC. Therefore, if the slope of AC is flatter, this suggests that AC is some function greater than uh, MC. Okay, so we have that there. Next, uh, at the inflection point okay, that we had earlier, that middle point, okay, MC, is at its, uh, MC is at its minimum at that point. And in the range, so how is it uh, along here? Okay, we know that since the slope of the cost curve is MC, so at this point, it should be flat actually. The graph may be just misleading, but uh, the slope of MC there is zero. So MC is at its minimum since it's an inflection point. Okay. And in the range for Q, wherein C is convex, so what we know is MC is increasing. So notice here, after this minimum point here, MC is increasing, and so is AC, okay? So is AC. But what we know here is from this point to, the, to then on, okay, AC is now less than MC. At uh, the minimum of AC, okay, at the minimum of AC, okay, so when AC is zero, so notice at this point, okay, the slope of AC is zero, so this is just AC minus MC equal to MC, minus zero times Q, that just suggests that AC is equal to MC. So at this point here, that's AC equal to MC, okay? 
and that occurs because AC is at its minimum. So again, uh, that's a sort of explanation of a cubic uh, production function and a cubic cost function and how variable returns to scale tend to behave uh, as represented in these graphs.